Not all the hot nuts are created equal. When you roast nuts, things change. So this video is about how to roast nuts properly at the right temperature, but more importantly, how to choose which nuts to get roasted and which ones to just kind of avoid and just have raw, okay? The first thing that we really have to look at more than anything is going to be the fatty acid profile, okay? And how much they oxidize. When you roast nuts, you're going to have some degree of fatty acid oxidation. So you wanna make sure you're roasting nuts that are more stable. We'll talk about that in just a second. Hey, quick, by the way, Go ahead and hit the red subscribe button if you haven't already, and then please hit the bell icon. That way you never miss our daily scientific videos that can help you out with keto, fasting, and just general health. All right, polyunsaturated fats are the ones that are very, very good for us, but very unstable, okay? Unstable fats do not do well when they are heated. When you heat them, it's going to make it so that they ultimately get denatured and they can actually become toxic. So we'll talk about those nuts in just a second. Macadamia nuts have the lowest level of polyunsaturated fats. That means macadamia nuts are really, really stable. You could quite literally leave a bag of macadamia nuts in the center console of your car in a hot Texas summer day and they're gonna be fine. They're going to be stable because they don't oxidize. That's what makes them so great. So point is, you could put those suckers in the oven and roast those guys at well over 340 degrees and not really have much of a problem. So 340 degrees is kind of the sweet spot. The nice thing is when you roast macadamia nuts at a high temperature, they develop a whole new taste. I personally love them when they're kind of crispy and a little bit brown. Hazelnuts make the close second with ones that you can roast at a high temperature. Very low polyunsaturated fatty acid content and a high monounsaturated, so they can just handle the heat. Then we get into almonds and pistachios, which technically can handle a good amount of heat. Okay, you could cook those at 280 degrees Fahrenheit. However, I have more to say about almonds. Okay, so before you just go throwing your almonds in your oven and heating those nuts up, I want you to hear what else I have to say there, okay? So skip that for one second. Now let's talk about the nuts that are rich in omega-3s. Okay, we've got pecans, we've got walnuts, which are super high in omega-3, which makes them a very good nut, but it's alpha-linolenic acid, which is good for you, but if it gets put in the oven and it gets roasted, there's a high likelihood that it's going to oxidize and become toxic. So I would strongly suggest avoiding roasted pecans and avoiding roasted walnuts. And if you do roast them, Roast them at a very low temperature. Roast them at like 200 degrees for a low and slow period of time, all right? Now, I will say that walnuts that are roasted at 250 degrees end up with 30 times the amount of fatty acid oxidation than macadamia nuts roasted at the same temperature. That just goes to show there is a big difference between the fragility of different nuts. Fun fact though, when you roast nuts, you do break down some of the phytic acid. So the phytic acid is what's called an anti-nutrient. You hear people talking about that. When you consume nuts, it can potentially stop the absorption of some minerals and some nutrients, which can be bad. That's why when you look at animal droppings, a lot of times there's chunks of seeds and nuts because they don't digest, okay? Well, point is, when you roast them, it actually breaks down that phytic acid so you can get more nutrients out of the nut. Speaking of nutrients though, we have to talk about antioxidant capacity and how much the antioxidants in a nut can handle. So even if you wanted to roast a nut at a high temperature, like a macadamia nut, be forewarned that you potentially kill off the antioxidant properties. So when you cook above 280 degrees, generally that is the upper limit of most antioxidants, like the vitamin E that you're gonna find in nuts. So antioxidants are there to protect us from reactive oxygen species, but if you heat them too much, they denature. So a super roasted nut is not going to have a lot of antioxidant properties. So just know that for a fact. Okay, there's one really important thing I have to talk about, and that's talking about the risk of roasting specific nuts. So we'll talk about that in a second. By the way, I do wanna make a mention, all the nuts that I typically get and stock my pantry with, I now get through Thrive Market. Now, if you've seen my videos before, then you know that I'm always talking about them. So I have created keto bundles, I've created fasting bundles. What that means is I've created grocery boxes that are specific for given diets. That way my followers, people that watch my videos, can utilize my grocery boxes like they're going grocery shopping with me. So I have all kinds of various types of nuts and roasted nuts in my Thrive boxes. So you can check that out on Thrive Market, which is an online-based grocery store, down below in the description after you finish this video. Okay, now let's move into acrylamide. Acrylamide is a carcinogen, a pretty gnarly carcinogen that is formed as a result of roasting specific nuts, predominantly almonds. So basically what happens is when you roast almonds, there's a reaction called a Maillard reaction. And it's usually a reaction of the carbonyl groups. And it's kind of a complex scientific thing. But basically what happens is they form this acrylamide, which is very, very toxic to the body. And this happens with almonds when you roast them above like 120 degrees Celsius, which we're gonna be probably in the ballpark of like 
200 ish degrees Fahrenheit. That's not very much temperature, right? Well, what is the most common roasted nut that you see out there? You see roasted almonds. Okay, I would usually recommend not roasting almonds. I would recommend sprouting them. Or if you do want to roast them, at least get the ones that are already blanched. That way you're not going to have as much of the effect with the Maillard reaction on the skin. Okay, so very, very important. So typically go raw or sprouted with the almonds so you can avoid that acrylamide response. Anyhow, I can do more of these quick tip cooking style roasting videos if you want to see them. Just make sure you post them down in the comment section below. And as always, check out Thrive Market and make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.